Now, it's another week of difficulty for the Prime Minister. Whilst this evening Rishi Sunak will set out his foreign policy agenda, a doctrine of what he's describing as robust pragmatism at the Lord Mayor's banquet, it's his struggles at home, perhaps, that will likely be at the forefront of his mind. Not one, not two, but three rebellions brewing on his own back benches. Two on the planning bill, the NIMBYs, led by Theresa Villiers, wanting to end presumption for sustainable development. And the YIMBYs, led by Simon Clark, seeking to end Rishi Sunak's ban on onshore wind farms. And this morning, a third rebellion on asylum seekers, being led by the former Brexit Secretary David Davis. He, along with 50 colleagues, is demanding that economic migrants travelling from safe countries such as Albania are returned far more quickly. Well, what an intray for the Prime Minister this week. Let's talk it all, let's talk it all over with John Rental, Chief Political Commentator at The Independent. And John, I, the Prime Minister probably wants us to be talking about foreign affairs today, but it is the domestic troubles that he really must be focusing on, I would imagine. This latest uh, letter being written by David Davis does seem to pose a significant challenge on a very uh, hot stone, hot button issue. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, after the cost of living and the NHS, I think the, the question of small boats coming across the channel is possibly the most important that uh, Rishi Sunak's facing. But what's what's significant about all three rebellions that you've just listed? Uh, you've got onshore wind. Uh, you've got uh, the planning relaxation of uh, planning uh, rules to allow uh, more house building, and you've got uh, David Davis on uh, sending back uh, asylum seekers. Uh, the common theme in all of them is that absolutely nothing. Uh, can happen, and the government is uh, is completely powerless. Uh, and what's significant, really, is is the suggestion that the, the the discipline in the Conservative Party, Parliamentary Conservative Party, is breaking down. It's interesting to see how these sort of spiralled. First, Theresa Villiers uh, laid down a number of amendments to this planning bill, and, and almost in response. Uh, Simon Clark, who's been on the mo more pro-house building end of the Conservative Party, uh, al almost in response to that, he laid a sort of uh, countervailing amendment, not on house building, but of course on, on onshore wind, and managed to attract the support of Boris Johnson, of Liz Truss, of a number of big beasts. Is it just open right. season now for Conservative backbenchers to defy the government? Well, I mean, not quite. I mean, neither of those issues, uh, house building or uh, onshore wind is particularly important because, it, I mean, it's just not possible to build uh, a significantly larger number of houses. Uh, and it's not, and, you know, it's not possible to build wind turbines uh, in many more places uh, in the UK because of local opposition. And everybody, uh, you know, everybody accepts that there has to be some kind of local consent uh, for these things. So the, so the argument really comes down to, and this is something that, that Michael Gove is negotiating with the rebels. Uh, the, the argument really comes down to how you measure uh, local consent. Uh, and the same, the same really goes for house building. I mean, how do you overcome local opposition uh, without, uh, without putting conservative seats in, in danger? Uh, the asylum seekers issue is, is slightly different, I accept. Uh, 